Hi everyone, for this video I wanted to take you guys on a journey with myself and actually four other of my colleagues. In this video we're going to look at two of them. They're anesthesiologists and they do regional anesthesia, thoracic anesthesia, and chronic pain management. And we're all general anesthesiologists as well of course. So I want you guys to take a walk with us through our days and see how it goes. And we're going to be taking a look at what we do on a regular basis. My colleagues are all women and they are all excellent in their crafts. So these ladies are my support network. You definitely want to make sure you have a support network with you when you're going through any difficult time in life. Education, of course, is one of those challenging points. So having that group of people with you to help motivate you really helps. So these ladies are that for me. So let me introduce you to my anesthesia squad. So for the first video, we're gonna take a look at one of my great friends who's practicing in Long Island, New York. She's an excellent acute pain and regional anesthesiologist, and she's a new mom. So let's take a look on a typical day in the life for Dr. Joseph. Say good morning world, it's Dr. Joseph Watkins and I am getting ready to run into work. Today is one of my earlier days. Be a good boy. <laughs> See you later. Whew. All right, I just pulled up to the hospital. This is my everyday routine. I'm always on the verge of being late because I have trouble leaving my little one in the morning. I'm wasting so much, so it is T minus 20 minutes until I have to start my case. So I've got to get changed and see my patient. Let me be one minute late and see what'll happen. Mm. Either way, it's important to be on time so that your patients don't feel like you are rushed or anything like that. So Ooh. I'm puffing and puffing, please don't judge me. Let's see what other cases I have lined up for today. I've got our big board. It's already looking at our big board here. It looks like I am running about three operating rooms today. Mm -hmm -hmm. It's gonna be busy. So right now I'm gonna head to the lactation room and try to pump a little bit. In between doing my cases, I sort of have to make time to pump milk on my little one. I just had a baby about mm, four and a half months ago. Oh my gosh, what am I talking about? Five months, it's gonna be five months next week. So I often run in between cases and bring myself into this little room over here in an effort to pump my milk. All right, I just got my call to start my case. So I am hurrying down this hallway right now so that we can get started on on time for this case. Say hi to Ernesto, Good say morning. hi to everybody. Good morning, this is our team. Let me find my mask and get myself together. All right, so just looking at the next patient, I know that I'm gonna need my CMAC. Okay, what is a CMAC? A CMAC is sort of a video laryngoscope that we use in order to intubate patients, okay? A lot of the times we use a standard laryngoscope, but the CMAC, here I'll put it on, is a tool that allows us to really visualize the airway properly, live, real time, big screen. And um, see, it's nice, right? And then there's this camera camera portion here that is going to attach to this blade, okay? So if a patient has an airway that's worrisome, meaning a larger face, um, big tongue, um, for our bariatric patients, this is really great in order to help get them off to sleep in a safe manner. It allows me to see everything, honey, when I'm placing the breathing tube. And you wanna make sure that when you're placing the breathing tube, your first shot is essentially your best shot. So part of being a great anesthesiologist is always having a plan, all right? You wanna make sure that you have a plan and not just one plan. You wanna make sure that you've got a plan A, B, C, D, E, F, okay? <laughs> By the time you get to F, you're just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> and I mean, I feel like that applies to any aspect in life too. You don't wanna just have one go-to. You wanna make sure that you've got many tricks in the bag in order to get through a tough situation. So for this next video, we're gonna take a look at one of my great friends out in Dallas, Texas, and we're gonna see how a typical day for her usually goes. She's a full-time physician and a mom, and she is able to balance all those things and do it excellently. She does chronic pain, and she does general anesthesia, and she's in the clinic and in the OR. So let's take a look at how that day looks for her and what she does to balance all of that. to go into work briefly yesterday um, to give a talk to some of the PACU nurses. I actually spoke about 
patient positioning, complications associated with patient positioning. Um, so that was Saturday. It didn't take too long, but you know, it doesn't feel like a weekend if you still have to go into work. So this is my first day of the weekend that I actually don't have to go in. Um, So now we're down in the clinic, just taking a look at the schedule for the day. So we're talking through plans, following up on procedures, seeing how well patients have done, how well their pain has responded, scheduling patients for repeat procedures, seeing new patients and formalizing a plan of care for them as well as reviewing any consults that come through for the pain clinic to see if they're appropriate candidates for treatment in our clinic. We do anesthesia for electroconvulsive therapy with the psychiatrist. We also do anesthesia for electrophysiology cardiac cases, things like pacemaker revisions, things like atrial fibrillation ablations. We help out the pulmonologist in the bronchoscopy lab. We help out the radiologist and in interventional radiology when they need anesthesia for their patients. So it can be a very dynamic assignment because there's lots of patients, lots of different services that we work with. And obviously anytime you work outside of the OR, it's, we call it an unfamiliar environment. So the risk is slightly higher. So it can be a very dynamic day, but it's always nice to have a break from the OR, get to see some different services, get to move around a little bit, and get to stretch your anesthesia skills outside of the operating room. On the go. Today I'm doing a bunch of cases, so I am headed to pre-op my next patient. Headed to the Pixis. My first patient is a diabetic, so I am going to get him some insulin. Waiting on this insulin. Once I get this insulin, I'm going to give the patient some insulin subcutaneously and see if we can get his blood sugar down. So today is my post-call day. So I spent the morning going to my doctor's appointment because I am actually 29 weeks and four days pregnant. So went and did that. Did some household things like cooking, a little bit of cleaning, just finished doing dinner time. And now we are in the bath. It's time for my little one to take her back. Oh, so just working on a little bit of laundry. Make sure that we get all that stuff done so that we can actually get a chance to enjoy the weekend when the weekend comes. So I hope you guys really enjoyed watching this video featuring two of my friends, Dr. Joseph and Dr. Norzota. So those are some of the options of what you can do in anesthesia. And as far as the next part of this video, I will really hope that you guys stay tuned and watch the second part on my channel, Three Anesthesia and Me, where I'm going to feature a thoracic anesthesiologist who works at Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York City and an acute pain anesthesiologist who works with me at my job at Westchester. And again, thank you Dr. Webb for this wonderful opportunity to show everyone what we can do as women in medicine. Till next time, I gotta get my kids.